Years ago, there used to be this very long list called Forbidden Fruit. These were cars you and I could not get in the U.S. Thankfully, that list has gotten shorter and shorter and shorter. However, the list sadly still exists. Now, you're looking at this picture and you're saying, you may not be in the U.S. right now, but we can get that in the U.S. Actually, two different versions. That is indeed true. However, one cannot get this. A Nissan Patrol. Nismo. So, while we're here, specifically United Arab Emirates, let's take a bit of a tour of what Dubai and Abu Dhabi have to offer and do so in something Nismo, but a lot bigger than what we're used to. which is the Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Street. This is effectively a freeway, and that is Dubai dead ahead of us. This is when you think Dubai, that is it. You can see uh, the Burj Khalifa would not suggest going there. It is ridiculously overpriced to go to the top. It's neat to see, but it would be cheaper to fly to New York and go to the top of the Empire State Building, no joke. It dawned on me that perhaps I have jumped ahead of myself in all this excitement of forbidden fruit. And really, the question we have to answer is, why is this forbidden fruit? Because you're looking at it and thinking, well, that, that's a Nissan Armada or a Nissan Patrol or an Infiniti QX with just a different grill. Well, there are some significant changes that make up a Nismo, actually more than other Nismos, at least in the US. Uh, the biggest being is the power output, same 5.6 V8, but it goes from 390 horsepower and adds 38 extra horsepower, goes to 428. Uh, that is, what, 28 more horsepower than the Infiniti QX. The torque is 413, so that's more than the Armada, but it's the same as the Infiniti QX80. You know what you do notice? You notice a lot more lower end grunt. It's not like top end power, the extra, what is it, 38 extra horsepower over the US Armada, like put your foot into it. It is definitely a great city vehicle, uh, but I took it on the freeway over the past like three days. There's not a lot of extra top end. I mean, it's, the thing is not really designed for that. I would argue this is a better city vehicle. It's better for car and the Rugrats around because of the extra power. It's got, you know what it has? It's got the swagger in terms of acceleration, like an, an Escalade. I don't know if you've ever driven an Escalade. When you get on an Escalade, man, you feel like you're the top of Macho Mountain. Right after I shot that segment driving through Dubai on the E11, I stopped at a fuel station, probably the most expensive one I could find, right off the freeway, and got 105 liters of fuel in a very thirsty car. Uh, that was at 246 AED per liter. Now, if we do the math, what is it, about 3785 liters to the US gallon, 246, so what is it, it's 9, 933, 940, uh, AED per US gallon. Uh, translated to dollars, that's about 255, somewhere around there. Now, when I left California at a high street gas station, it was 375 a gallon. At Costco, a cheapskate like me would go to a Costco, that would be about 350, somewhere around there. So it's about a dollar, a little over a dollar a gallon cheaper over the taxing thieves from Sacramento and Albany. One of the joys of being a distance runner is you can pretty much exercise anywhere you go. This is what I do wherever I travel to. Well, one of the spots I wanted to hit was this thing called the Palm. For those of you who don't know, the Palm is this reclaimed land that's in the shape of a palm. It's a very fancy way of saying they threw earth into the water and they basically made land where there isn't. And this gives you a really good indication of the pace of construction here in Dubai because uh, I came out here to do the run. There is a running path that goes all the way around the perimeter of the pump. It's wonderful, uh, not in the summer apparently. And to continue the construction, they're building this barrier reef that keeps the elements from coming in, the water. Uh, and what's really interesting, while all this construction goes on, there's one, two, three, four of these big backhoe things here, as well as a barge of rocks. There's all these condos, townhomes, single family homes that are either under construction or it looks like they just recently finished construction 
but I'm amazed at how many are empty. Like a lot of Dubai, there's a lot of residential projects that have nobody living in them. construction continues. And now for something completely different, Jebel Jais. Excuse the pronunciation if I have completely butchered it, but that is to say the tallest mountain in the UAE. It's about 150 kilometers east of Dubai in the Oman region of the UAE, and it is 1,934 meters tall. It's about 6,300 feet for us Imperial Unit fans. A couple of interesting fun facts. Amazing driving road, probably the best in the country. And then number two, to get here, you have to dodge goats. I've been all over the world to find driving roads, but I don't think I've ever had to dodge goats. This is the Bilstein setup, something that we won't be able to do again, at least in the US, because they don't bring it to the US, this setup. Now let's dive into this beautiful declining radius turn with an elevation change, really push it more. And the thing you notice is really, this translates to, wow, this translates to down in the city, not so much here. The more aggressively you push it, you do get into situations like that. This composure, it cleans up the sloppiness of a large, tall vehicle. Think about where the center of gravity of this thing is. It's not like down, way down there, like a Nismo Z. It's like up here. So this is a lot of work to clean up. It's not to the point where you feel that it's unsafe. <laughs> And a very good early morning to you. This one was a bit earlier than I expected. I rose with the call to prayer, the 5 a.m. call to prayer, and got motivated to do an early morning run. This one around the Grand Zayed Mosque here in Abu Dhabi. And just a bit of a hint, vice here. I am a geek for historical buildings, architecture, religious buildings, presidential libraries, all that kind of stuff. Stuff I've featured on the show before. This one stands out for a couple of reasons. Number one, the sheer size of the building. It's the largest mosque in the UAE. Just the structure itself, forget about the parking lots and the grounds and the landscaping, is 30 acres, just the structure itself. The domes, there's 82 domes in total, four minarets. This was the vision of the late Sheikh Zayed, who is actually buried here now. And it was a construction project that lasted from 1996 all the way to 2007 at the cost of 545 million US dollars. If you're familiar with a mosque, this is very different than, say, a Greek Orthodox church that I'm used to. There's a lot of iconography, a lot of detail, very ornate. A mosque, entirely different. There's not all this ornate detail, so you can focus on the reason why you're at the mosque, for the relationship with God, and pray. The design, the architecture, some of the chandeliers, the way the carpeting is set up inside, arguably one of the most interesting from a design perspective that I've ever seen in my life. If you were following my Instagram feed last fall, you know this was part of a larger trip to the Middle East, my first ever, where I had the opportunity to drive the Porsche Panamera GTS on the F1 circuit in Bahrain. Well, while I was in the region, I figured, why don't we go see another country, one I'd never been to before, drive a car I can't drive back in the U.S., and most importantly, see some really good friends. What I didn't expect was the opportunity for that good friend to introduce me to one of his good friends and then he share with me his amazing office. You know, I raced uh, in single seaters up to GP2 yeah, and then now I race for Lamborghini and GT3, Super Trofeo, pretty much everything. They so you have in. a real tough life man. It could be, it could be worse, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll make our way. Obviously one of the probably standout things about Yas Marina Circuit is this underground pit exit. Okay. I don't know many other tracks that have a tunnel leading onto the track. Honestly, it's quite a difficult pit exit, but once you get used to it, it's, uh, it's a really cool part of the circuit. In a week's time, the circuit will be closing down and uh, we'll have a full renovation. Everything will be completely clean. And they clean, do this painted. every year? Every single year. Jesus. And it's amazing because the place looks brand new, completely yeah. brand new. So even all the tire marks they clean up, they paint, they put the paint down and everything. everything. Every, I promise you, everything you can see gets completely refurbished. Crazy. Every uh, Sunday, Tuesday and Wednesday, the circuit is open up for anyone to come completely for free and to come and run or cycle around the circuit. You're kidding me. Yeah. This is an incredible view here. It's amazing. Like you see this in 
in pictures and in video, but to be in the car doing this, this yeah. is incredible. This is actually one of the longest straights uh, on the F1 calendar. It's just over a kilometer long. Okay. Uh, the cars reach, I think, to 340, 345 kilometers an hour F1. Wow. And it's quite hard on the brakes into turn eight. Uh, this is the south paddock. So this is where the support series run during Formula One. Yeah. Honestly, the, the pit setup here is as nice as any Formula One main pits around the rest of the world, but this is just for the Those support. fillers you showed me, it's like a townhouse behind yeah. a pit. I've been literally on their cases to try and get them to rent me one for ages, <laughs> but they're not having it to be honest. <laughs> One week, I've been on now. It's set two F1 tracks. Yeah. So I have I have I have a three hundred percent increase in my visits to F1 tracks. <laughs> and this one though is so different because you've got the water. Like yeah. Texas is Texas. Yeah. Bahrain was really cool. Yeah. Great track, but that doesn't have quite this like. There's something different about this, like having that hotel in the center. Yeah, I mean, look. To be hundred percent honest. It might not necessarily be the most fun circuit to drive on. Yeah. Okay. It's a little bit flat. It's not a boring track to drive on, but uh, it's a little bit predictable in the sense that most of the corners are 90 degree corners, just long straights, yeah. hard braking, 90 degree, yeah. that kind of stuff. Uh, it doesn't have as many fast flowing uh, corners as somewhere how like Spa. How long is the actual circuit? 5.5 k's. And how many turns? Uh, 21. Uh, when did it open? It opened in 2009. Oh, so the Middle East, man, they came on strong in, yeah. in F1 in about a, a five-year period, yeah. 2004 and then 2009. Yeah, but without a doubt, by far the best facilities compared to any circuit I've been to. What's the that cars. tower there? This is the Sheikh's Tower, so this is where he watches the F1 from. That's so his the, own place. personal suite is yes. an entire tower. Exactly. That's what you nice. call balling. <laughs> that, that is balling so hard. You are literally dragging. It's beyond dragging a mink on the floor. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can't, you can't do it better than that. Thank you.